What's going on guys? All right, today's gonna be day two of our auto arima or see and seasonal auto arima modeling uh, that we did in the last video. This video is actually gonna take you how to take what we did in the previous video uh, with that same example data set and really turn it into something that's gonna make you look substantially better. I mean, this is something that you can give to your boss, your coworkers, your peers, um, and let them forecast via an application that's launched in the browser um, on demand and it'll loop through your data set and do the forecast. So instead of writing a line of code for everything that you want to forecast, we're going to write one main block of code and then everything will be reactive from a drop down list and it'll loop through the data set and forecast in that way. This is probably not going to be super intro. Um, it's very basic and I've already written the main kind of block of code and left some blank stuff that we're going to run through together. And I'll put this uh, shell up on my website for you to get for free on DerekWillingham.com. But it is not going to be super basic. So if you're not, if you haven't already learned some stuff about Shiny applications or you're not decent with the syntax of R, this might be a little bit advanced for you. Um, but even if you're new, you should be able to kind of navigate your way through this, hopefully. Um, this is some cool stuff. I personally have applications like this running at a VP level in my corporation. Uh, it is good and it will make you look excellent. So the first thing that we're going to do, you can see here that I've got my UI um, laid out here. These are the packages that we're going to do. So let's go ahead and run our packages. Um, now, I personally put them on the server side as well. It, it, sometimes it can get kind of tricky as to where, whether you're reading from the server or the UI side. Um, either way, I just put them on both, makes it easier. A lot of times I'll do the same thing with reading the data in. Um, it gets even trickier when you publish these. Running it on your local host isn't as hard. So I'm going to go ahead and set my working directory and we're going to read in this data. Now, this is the same data that we used in the previous example, so nothing new here. Rec goods, clothing, footwear, uh, chemist, and here's our time. We might have to do something with this time. I'm not, I haven't paid attention to it. Um, it, it'll probably be a um, like a textual issue if it is this is gonna work either way So now that we have that let me kind of go through the UI on the server side I'm going to explain the code to you so that you understand it This is something that a lot of people don't do very well on shiny apps So uh, the first thing we'll do is go through the UI side. So this is setting up the UI so I'm saying um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna build the UI of the shiny app it's going to be a fluid page, which means that it'll react to screen sizes and uh, minimizing, maximizing PC, tablet, phone, etc. Um, it do auto does it for you. Now, the cool thing about Shiny apps is, is you can actually use Shiny. We can use Java in Shiny. We can also use uh, HTML and CSS to do all of our styling. I'm not going to get into a lot of that today because then it will be very advanced, but I might, I'll, I'll probably end up making a couple more videos on top of this video, and we can make this very, very sophisticated um, using you know HTML and CSS and stuff like that, um, Java. Um, anyway, a bunch of bootstrapping. So uh, what I'm doing here is setting the theme to uh, Carillion. Carillion. It's kind of a default blue white. Um, so here's tab panel in this that I'm going to upload. I, the stars are for you to fill in. So, you know, let's just name this. Um, this will be uh, forecasting. And then, so this is setting up a fluid row. Same thing, basically just laying the page out, saying we want everything to be fluid. Uh, sidebar layout, inside the sidebar layout, we're going to have a sidebar panel in this application. Uh, and in the panel, we're going to have a tab set panel. I'm setting my ID um, to tabs. It's not really necessary in this example because it's very simple. But if you have multiple tabs um, inside of that sidebar panel later on, it's very necessary because you need to be able to refer back to that to be reactive later in the future. So not only will the app be reactive, but inside the reactive app will be reactive to the tabs. I mean, it can get complicated very fast. So it's good practice to uh, set IDs for things that you're doing. So uh, IDs, just tabs, um, tab panel one, I just named it tab one, value, tab one. So, you know, one's a value name, kind of like an ID, and one's the actual name of the tab. Um, select input, I just put industry, industry, you can name that whatever you want. I should have put stars there. 
Um, you know, if this is something different for you and your company, name it that. Um, choices. Um, here's where we're starting to get into a little bit of the reactive stuff. So let's write a little bit of code right here. I mean, this is very simple. Um, our choices, so this, the choices, this block right here is to set up a drop down that's going to be reactive inside of our code line. So for us, what we need is, is we need all the column names of our data set. So um, we'll just do a simple call names of the data frame. Now we don't need all the column names because the first column is our time. So we're going to go from the second to the fifth column uh, and just pull those call names. And I need to put that inside. It won't work like that, obviously. Okay, so we're good there. So now our drop down is going to have our call names from uh, column two to column five. And then this is just some styling. Um, I'm saying I want a I want to put a buffer on the top of my margin of 15 pixels. Is all that saying? Um, don't really worry about this. And then this is a help te uh, help text. So this is saying you know we're going to say industry here. Choose industry above the forecast, that's just going to put a little gray on the bottom of your um, tab panel to let the, let the user kind of know what's happening. This is a very basic app. Um, and then we have to have under that um, uh, a main panel. The main panel is where we're going to display whatever we're displaying. In our case, we're going to be displaying a plot, which is going to loop through the data frame and plot whatever we choose as the good. So this is um, a plotly output. We're going to be using plotly in this. And uh, we're just going to name it um, plot one for simplicity. So that's it. Now let's go to our server side. Now, uh, this is where it gets a little complicated. And if you're not great at our syntax, um, and even if you kind of are, it might be kind of complicated if you're not used to shiny stuff. I'm doing some moderate stuff here, not crazy advanced, but it's, it is reactive. So I'm using standard R syntax with React reactive components inside of this to make the kind of loop work. So um, all this, is, we're reading the data frame in here, no big deal. Now what this is, is to create the FCAST dates. Um, what I'm doing there is if you know anything about Plotly, or even if you don't, uh, it will plot the history and then you add a trace and to make it all look like a seamless graph, like the, the his historical data, with the plot at the end of that, we're gonna to need to add trace that on. Well, it's gonna need an x-axis. So it's x-axis, I'm just saying one to six because we're gonna forecast six months in advance. Um, I would probably make those dates if I was doing this for a client or a customer so that it would match my dates of my historical component. Um, but for this, just I'm just showing you FCAS one to six. Um, now we set our server up, our function, we have an input and an output, um, observe event. Now this observe event is saying we're going to observe an event happening in the UI side. The UI side, we set up industry as an event for a drop down. So here we're saying observe event in, uh, input of industry. Industry is the tab drop down that we created in the UI side. So this is, the server is going to be watching for an event happening on the UI side, the UI side being the user interface. So when a user changes that drop down, it observes that event and changes whatever's inside of the observe event. So we have an output plot one, simple name like we did. Now here's um, plotly x axis for the plotly. Um, our x axis is going to be the data frame time. Our y axis right here. This is the reactive portion. So our y-axis is going to be, ooh, what is it? It's going to be, well, it's going to be the data frame where the call names of the data frame, yeah, where the call names of the data frame equal, equal the input, um, the input of industry. So, and it wouldn't, it's for all rows. So for all rows, we want the call. Okay. Um, okay. So this is saying I want the data frame, I want all the rows in the data frame where the data frame and the column names of the data frame equal the highlighted selection in the UI for industry dropdown. So every time someone changes the dropdown, the server code is looking for the UI code. It says, oh, there was a change. Okay. Well, what is it? And then the reactive portion inside of the plotly is saying, okay, well, uh, industry was changed to this, or the selection was changed to this industry for the dropdown. So 
this portion of code is also reactive now. So it will it will actually resubset the data frame to only the data that is the data frame where the call name equals the industry dropdown. So now that's the historical. So that pulls all the historical. And now we need to forecast and lay that on top as an add trace so that now we have the historical plus the forecast. So uh, we do that here with this add trace. Um, the rest of this is just names this first portion as historical. It's a scatter plot. Uh, the mode, we want scatter to be line, so it's going to be a line chart, basically. Um, and then this is just some, uh, some simple color and with uh, some line editing for the line. Now we're going to add our trace. Um, X is going to be our FCAST dates on this one. Our Y is now going to be... Um, this is basically the same thing, but we're going to wrap it inside of the forecast. So this will be, um, our Y will be the same data frame, all rows, where the data frame, ba, 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 what is it again? Is it, no, call names. All rows where the call names of the data frame equal, equal the input. Yes. Input. The input of industry, okay. But then we're gonna take and we're gonna wrap this. So this is gonna be auto. Auto arena. So we're going to forecast the auto data arena, and we only want the mean, so we're only pulling the mean out. Because um, the forecast function on its own will give you, as a data frame, will give you uh, high and low confidence intervals, your 85 and your 95 confidence intervals, as well as your forecast. So we're just saying we only want the mean. Uh, we're going to lay that on top of the historical as an address. So it's basically going to append it and look like one long line. Nailed it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So you can see. Uh, right now we're looking at, let's just rename it because it doesn't look good. Um, where is this tab one? This is industry forecast. I hope that's, I think that's the right tab. Yeah. All right. Now, we're at, uh, we're in the industry forecast tab. Now, in real life, you know, you'll end up having multiple one of these, depending on what's going on, uh, what you're doing, and then multiple pages. I mean, these things get crazy, right? But here is a simple application that we created that will run through all the industries in that, um, in that data frame that we had and forecast them on their own. Now, these aren't the seasonal, these are the non seasonal, but you get the point. And we can actually, uh, man, I don't know how long this video is going to be. But we can actually create a loop inside the observe event, which will switch between um, it'll switch between um, seasonal and non-seasonal as well. So we could actually put a tab down here that says seasonal, non-seasonal. It'll switch between the two. But for right now, here's Rec Goods. You know, you switch to footwear. Boom, footwear. Here's your footwear forecast. Um, and then you can see what I was talking about down here. Here's your real dates. Uh, and then this is just that one through six that we appended in real life. I would obviously change that. I don't like the way that it looks. So I would change it. I would make, you know, I would make this match this. Um, but this is a fully reactive, um, you know, app that we just created right now that you can run. And this will loop through any data set and forecast on the fly, whatever you're looking at. Um, and, and we can get very, very in depth with this. I mean, we can change we can change the forecast time to be reactive as well to where there's a drop down button that has um, linked the forecast. We can have a seasonal non seasonal button where it will loop between seasonal and non seasonal forecasts. Um, we can make the name of this chart reactive to where it will automatically place footwear in here. It'll say non seasonal footwear forecast. Um, I mean, it's so, so many things that we can do with this all be reactive um, and you can see all the metadata all the metadata is inside of here in the plotly package um, full zoom functionalities i mean this this is the kind of stuff guys that gets people excited if you're a new guy and you're trying to build something um, for a company that has to do with forecasting 
this is the stuff that's going to get people excited. This is the stuff that gets you noticed. Um, I mean, just so much we can do with this. We can place the actual forecasts themselves as a, as a table here. Um, we can make a, down, a data download tab and go to that tab, hit download, and it'll automatically download all of the data uh, results, the forecast results for all four um, places, both seasonal and non-seasonal, and a CSV file that to whoever's uh, computer is, you know, is looking at the tool. Um, I mean, we can place company logos in, in, in the top. I mean, you can really make this look like an awesome application. They work amazing on cell phones. Uh, they work great on tablets, fully reactive. And, you know, we can even, like I said, we can use HTML and CSS to style these. So this is just a very basic um, intro to what I was talking about with the reactive um, tool that you can build for an app, you know, an application to forecast and loop through. Um, you know, if this is something that is interesting and this video does well, you know, maybe I'll make a couple more videos and we'll get substantially more advanced on this application. We'll just build from here. But like I said, I mean, we can, you know, we can go way further with this than just this. But I think this is a very good starting point for you. The uh, R and UI code for this will be on my website, DerekWillingham.com. The data frames are already on my website from the last uh, tutorial that we did. So uh, I really hope that this helps out a lot, guys. I'm telling you, this is the stuff right here that sets you apart from your peers. Hopefully this helps, guys. If it does, leave comments down below. It helps the channel. If you're new here and you haven't already, please subscribe. It'll help out a lot. Uh, I think we're at like 48 subs and I've you know, honestly, I need to do a lot better and I will do better at making these videos. So hopefully this helps guys. Till next time, try not to work too hard. Not working. Fuck yeah.